Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 7, Estimation Single Population. In this chapter, we will look at how to create confidence intervals for the sample, for the population mean and population proportion. So, we can estimate a population parameter. Let's say this is mu that we want to estimate the mean or the population proportion p but we do not know those parameters so what we can do is we use a sample a sample and from the sample we can get the sample mean and sample proportion and this is called point estimate so those are point estimates but sometimes we have to need be more confident so from the point estimates uh, we create a range so the lower range is called lower confidence limit, upper range is called upper confidence limit. So interval estimate provides more information about the population characteristic than a point estimate. That's why the interval estimates are called confidence interval estimates. So how, how uh, like, you know, this confidence level is something that we can decide. Uh, usually we use 95% confidence. So looking at the sample statistics, uh, we get 95% confidence about the population parameters, for example. Now, let's say the confidence level is 95%. And this 95% is something that we are going to use very frequently. Uh, that also means that 1 minus alpha equals 95, like or 0.95 or 95%. So what that means is, if you repeat the samples again and again, 95% uh, of the time, the confidence interval of size n will contain the true parameter. That's the idea. 95% uh, is again something that we decide, but this is the most commonly used uh, decision on the confidence interval level. Now, the general form of confidence interval is first we have the point estimate. Uh, in that case, it's theta hat, but for example, for population mean, that will be x bar sample sample mean plus minus. Uh, margin of error. Now this term, margin of error, is something again calculated from the sample. So it depends on the sample standard deviation. It depends on the sample size and it also depends on the confidence interval that we choose. So for confidence intervals, we can create confidence intervals for the population mean. We can also do the same for the population proportion. Now, normally we also look for the population variance, but for the population variance, uh, it requires a different distribution. And this distribution is called actually the chi-square distribution. And for this course, uh, it's beyond our well, concepts. So we will only see the population mean and population proportion. Now, to find confidence interval for the mean, if you know the population variance, you simply find the mean from the sample. And let's call this x bar. And plus minus this term here, z alpha over 2 sigma over square root of n. Now, n is basically the sample size. So n is the sample size. So this is called the sample size. Now the sigma here is the standard deviation.
And this Z alpha over 2 is actually the confidence level. So confidence level for it can be 90% confidence, 95%, 99%. Most of the time we use 95% confidence in travel. And for that level, we have a specific number. Um, the most commonly used number for this Z value is actually something around 2. So this, this number, the Z alpha over 2, will be about something around 2. It's a fixed number. But that depends on the confidence interval that you choose. So our confidence interval will be x bar plus minus z alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n. Now, the upper end of this confidence interval is called the UCL, upper confidence limit. And the lower level is called the lower confidence limit. So at the end, what we have is a range. On the left side, I'm oh, sorry, actually, on the left side, we have the, the lower confidence limit, LCL. And on the right side, we have the upper confidence limit, UCL. And basically, they're both based on this formula here. So the confidence interval formula can also be written as x bar plus minus margin of error. And this is the margin of error. Here we have the margin of error. Again, this margin of error depends on three parameters. First is the z value. Uh, this is a number that will be around 2. It's based on a specific table, the normal distribution table. And sigma is standard deviation. And n is the sample size. Now, let's check this margin of error. How we want to reduce this margin of error. Now, how can we do that? One way is to reduce sigma. Uh, if the standard deviation is low, then the error margin will be lower. Another way is to increase sample size. Another way is to decrease the confidence level, but we don't want to decrease the confidence level, actually. Uh, but in most of the things, most of the time, the best thing that we can do to increase confidence in travel is to increase sample size. Because once you increase the sample size, the margin of error will be reduced. So you will have less error. Now, the most commonly used confidence levels are 90%. And this is 90% here. 95%. And sometimes we use 98%. And also 99% is commonly used. Now, for our course, to keep things very simple, uh, we will use 95% confidence level. And what's important is that if you are using 95% confidence level, the Z value, the associated Z value, will be 1.96. So you have to remember this number. For this course, we are going to use 95% confidence level and the Z value will be 1.96. So here's an example. We have a sample of 11 circuits. Okay. So what does that mean? Uh, that means sample size n let's write it um, here the sample size is n and n equals 11 from a large normal population that has a mean resistance of 2.2 ohms so the mean from the sample is given and that's equal to 2.2 .2. 
Now we know from past testing that the population standard deviation is 0.35. So we also know sigma is equal to 0.35. Now determine the 95% confidence interval. Okay, so we have the 95%. Uh, in that case, the associated z value for 95% will be 1.96. So let's put those numbers into the formula. So our x bar is given 2.2. The z value for 90%, 95% is 1.96. Now sigma is given 0.35. And the sample size is equal to 11. So I put those numbers and we get a range. So the range becomes 2.2 plus minus 0 0.2068. So the, the lower confidence level limit, the lower confidence limit will be 1.9932. And the upper confidence limit will be 2.406 so you just put the numbers into the formula and you get the relevant confidence intervals now this was the assumption where sigma square sigma was known but uh, in real life we actually don't know the sigma uh, but we use a sample statistics now, if you don't know the population standard deviation uh, you only know the sample standard deviation in that case, instead of the z distribution, you use the t distribution. t equals x bar minus mu over s over square root of n. Now again, for our course, uh, we will assume that the sample size is large enough that we can use the z distribution. But in real life, in actual correct manner, that you need to use the t distribution. But there's a very strong relationship between t distribution and z distribution. The t distribution also depends on something called the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. But when n is large, if n is strong enough, if n is large enough, the t distribution will converge to z distribution. So see, for example, when the t when Sample size, uh, when the degrees of freedom is 13, that means sample size is 14, it gets closer to normal distribution. Now, for our course, our sample size will be 100. Now, 100, again, for our course, 100 is a very strong number, it's a very high number. That means we can use the normal distribution instead of the t distribution. Now, the idea is that if you don't know the sound uh, deviation of the population, you can use the sound deviation of the sample. But that means there's an extra uncertainty uh, which depends on the sample size. In that case, you use the t distribution. But again, for our course, uh, we will not use the t distribution. Uh, we will, our sample size is large enough, so we can simply use the state distribution. And the formula is almost the same, but instead of the z value, uh, you put the t value here. But again, if the sample size, if n is large enough, instead of using the t distribution, you can use the z distribution. And the margin of error calculations are again the same. So here's an example. We have a random sample of n equals 25. The sample mean is 50, and the sample standard deviation is 8. Now calculate 95% confidence interval. Now put the sample mean here, 50. Uh, S is 8, and the sample size is 25. Now what's different here this time is the Instead of z value, we have the t value. 
But again, the sample size is 24. If sample size is 24, the T value becomes 2.0639. But actually, you know, if you remember the Z value for the same thing is 1.96. And in fact, if the sample size gets large enough, then the T value will be almost the same as the Z value. So that's why uh, if the sample size is large enough, instead of using the T distribution, we can use the Z distribution. Now, the second thing that we're going to see in this chapter is about population proportion. You can also use the, the sample proportion, P hat, to find information about the population proportion. So in that case, if the sample size is large enough, and our sample size is large enough, we can get the population proportion parameters using the sample proportion statistics. And there's a formula for this. The confidence interval for the population proportion is given by the sample proportion, this is the sample proportion, and this term here, this is actually the sample proportion uh, standard deviation divided by the square root of n, and z value is the same. And we can do this as long as the population size is large enough. And our, for our research, the population size will be large enough. So. Here's an example. We have a sample of 100. So what that means? Sample size 100. So n equals 100. And out of this n, 25 are left-handed. So the proportion of the left-handed people will be 25 over 100. Now, we want to find 95% confidence interval. So let's put the numbers into the formula. And our formula is here. It's a very simple formula. P hat plus minus Z alpha over 2 square root P hat times 1 minus P hat over N. So the proportion is 25 over 100, which is 0 0.25. Uh, Z value is again for 95%, this will be standard 1.96 times P hat 0 0.25, 1 minus P hat 0 0.75 divided by sample size 100. And that will give us an interval for the proportion from 0 0.1651 to 0 0.3349. Now, to sum up, uh, for in this chapter, we looked at how to calculate confidence intervals for the population mean and population proportion. And if the sample size is large enough, you can use the Z value. And the Z value depends on the confidence interval. The most commonly used Z value will be Z alpha over two, and the most commonly used version of this Z value is 1.96. And that's for 95%. So if you have a 95% confidence interval, the Z value will be 1.96. So that's an easy number to remember. So I'll see you in the next lecture.